Hello, hello. If you are a brand new middle school math teacher, this video is for you. If you're a brand new math teacher, as in you've been teaching less than five years, go ahead and hit that like button below this video and let me know that you are relatively new, newish <laughs> into the middle school math position in this field. I'm so excited for you. If you, if we've never met each other before, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership, your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and Algebra One Middle School Math. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my brand new middle school math teachers, five of my best tips that you need to know as a brand new math teacher. I've been teaching for 13 years. I've definitely learned a thing or two. I've made a ton of mistakes and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. So I wanna share with you my five things that every brand new middle school math teacher needs to know. So number one, pick your battles carefully, okay? This includes battles with students, battles with parents, battles with administration. If you are going to nitpick, I want you to ask yourself, is this the hill I'm going to die on? Okay. Whether that is, you know, you're, you got an argument with administration, you got an argument with the teacher, you got, an, you're getting into arguments with students, pick your battles carefully. Think about whatever it is that is triggering you, whatever it is that is making you angry, is this going to be the greater good for the rest of your class, for the rest of your career, for the rest of just you being in this situation? Because sometimes it's not worth it and it's better for us to let things go. Rule number two, maybe the most top secret of secrets is make friends with the custodian, secretaries, and cafeteria workers. They are the unsung heroes of your campus. You will need them over and over and over again. Make friends with them, make them feel appreciative, say thank you every chance that you get, let them know that you're grateful for them because they do pretty much everything on campus and you need them. So make friends with them from the beginning, okay? Number three, be flexible. Not all lessons will go as planned. Not all lessons need this big giant song and dance and you gotta make a big production about it, okay? If a lesson isn't going okay, it's okay, take a break. Take a break, play a game, stretch, change directions, but just know that it's okay. And not everything's gonna go as planned. You might have this like great big vision of what it's gonna look like and it might not happen that way. And just know it's okay. Number four. Say something to each, say something nice to students every day, okay? Remember, the ones who are the hardest to love need the most love from us. If you can't say something to every kid every day, say something to every single one of your kids by the end of the week, for sure. I know sometimes our classes are huge, we might not be able to get to every student in every period. And I know that's really frustrating, you know, but it's really important that we give the students who are, are not always the loudest. They are, they kind of fly under the radar. We don't forget about those kids. You know, they're the ones that don't always get the most attention. And we need to make sure that we're lifting up all of our students and making sure every single one of my students are, are seen and heard. And then lastly, number five, I want you to, from the beginning of your career, ask for help and set boundaries. The next thing I'm gonna say might be controversial, okay? And that is don't add your school email to your phone. See this phone? Do not add your school email on here because what you will do is you will check your emails while you're at home because I know you're an amazing teacher and you just wanna help and, and support and be there, but don't do it. Don't check your emails after school. When you leave school, leave it all at school. Your emails, they'll be there in the morning, okay? And if people are gonna give you crap for it, if you have parents who are like yelling at you because you're not answering their emails late at night, it's okay because they should not be working, right? Like they're not gonna be answering emails at their own job after work. 
neither should you. You need to have some space and some separation from work. And here's the other thing. If you start answering parent emails, say at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, you are training them that that is what is, that's what you'll do, right? If you start that, you can't go back. And if you do go back, they're going to be upset. So just don't even start it from the beginning, right? Those parents will, will, can be trained that you will respond to emails during school hours, you know, between seven and 4 PM, you can respond to emails, but after 4 PM, nope, that's our barrier or whatever time slot you, you know, want to set for yourself, whatever boundary you want to set for yourself. That was my personal boundary. I, I will, will respond to you between seven and four and anything outside of that, We'll have to wait for tomorrow because the truth is it will be there and nothing is going to be, nothing is enough on fire that you have to respond right away. So I hope that these five tips for you as a brand new teacher were helpful. I know that these five things were things that helped me get through my beginning stages, you know, my beginning years of teaching and truly made them easier, more help me be more successful, and I hope that they will help you too. Until next time, bye for now.